Well, thank you again for coming. Um, I would like to also elaborate a little bit on the uh, mission of the uh, Provost Colloquium se uh, series that um, Provost Joe Bruno has already mentioned. Um, we would like to um, ensure that there are no barriers between um, different departments and different colleges of this university. And we would also like to break down the barriers between the university and the community. And we would like to make sure that um, uh, our faculty members are not siloed in the classrooms, but um, also have an opportunity to share their interests, their passions, and their expertise with a much wider audience at the university and uh, the local community. And so may I introduce um, Dr. Ko Mishima, who is an expert on Japanese politics. And his research focuses on Japanese bureaucratic politics, Japanese prime ministership, and the US-Japan Security Alliance. His articles have appeared in World Policy Journal, International Journal of Public Administration, Asian Survey, and CSIS Japan Chair Platform. He earned his PhD from the Johns Hopkins University School of Advanced International Studies and his BA from Keio University in Tokyo, Japan. Welcome, Dr. Komishima. Thank you very much for coming for today's my lecture. And to be honest, okay, uh, okay, today's audience is larger than I expected. And I, I need to thank okay, okay, Joe, for the okay, you providing the very <laughs> okay important incentive. Okay. Today is a February 14th, okay, day for the lovers. So therefore, okay, as uh, we have lots of more lovers for the academic learning, okay, here in USA, <laughs> here at the ESU, student, lots of the okay, student come here. So I'm okay, I, I would like to thank okay Joe. Yes. And also I, I need to thank okay another guy which is who is very different from the my boss, okay, Joe. Okay, I'm talking about the uh, okay, that dear leader. Okay, currently causing the big news in okay global media. That little okay rocket man. Okay, okay, <laughs> you know the fact okay whom I'm talking about. Okay, that dear Kim Jong. Okay, that leader because of that person. <laughs> suddenly, okay, my subject. Okay, this is U.S. Japan Security Alliance. Few years ago, this is a really specialized topic. Nobody really wants to hear, okay, detailed discussion of this type of alliance. But now suddenly becomes a mainstream topic because of the, okay, uh, the escalating agitation between that the leader and our president. So, okay, uh, the, so but anyway, uh, the, okay, I would like to discuss, okay, this U.S.-Japan Security Alliance. But my focus is not just talking. Okay, I'm going to briefly touch. Okay, of course, going to touch on the issue of the North Korea. But more importantly, I would like to discuss about the big picture of the United, okay, U.S.-Japan Security Alliance. And uh, so, therefore, okay, first of all, okay, uh, the, okay, let me start my lecture. Okay, and uh, okay, first of all, okay, this is a basic geography. And of course, I believe that all of you are familiar with the location of Japan. Okay, Japan is an island country, and uh, it's okay, uh, the, 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 okay, floating off the coast of the far eastern side of the Eurasian continent, and sharing the border such a country like as you can see with Russia, or North Korea, South Korea, and also China and Philippines, and also plus the Pacific Ocean, United States, and this. Okay, today's topic, okay, uh, that I'm going to talk about this U.S.-Japan Security Alliance. United States and the Japanese keeping the, okay, military security partnership, okay, since 1952. I'm going to discuss this later, but uh, until 1952, Japan was under the military control, occupation of the United States. And, uh, okay, 1952, Japan recovered political independence, and since that day until today, United States and Japan is a security partner. And legally speaking, this okay, as a security alliance based on the treaty of the mutual cooperation and security between the United States and Japan. This treaty was negotiated 90, okay, back in 1960s. Since then, okay, the same treaty is in effect, okay, as automatically <coughs> renewed. And the basic 
okay, basic point of the, this, okay, basic okay, aspect, okay, most important aspect of this treaty, legal obligation is, okay, under this treaty, Japan is promising, okay, obliged to provide, okay, as, okay, provide or the allow the United States to keep, okay, as uh, America's, okay, as uh, mit, okay, American forces, military, okay, armed forces on Japanese soil. Okay, United States, okay, under this treaty, allowed to, okay, keep the stations, U.S. forces on Japanese island. In exchange, United States promising Japan to protect Japanese national self-defense, okay, national security. This is a, okay, as a basic scheme of the, this, okay, uh, the U.S.-Japan Security Alliance. But in reality, I will discuss later, okay, the reality of the today's security alliance much, much larger. Okay, okay, have the larger implication for the, okay, both, okay, uh, the American global strategy and also global politics. Okay, and, okay, first of all, I would like to, okay, put this U.S.-Japan Security Alliance in the context of the U.S. Over, okay, overall global strategy. And as you know, United States keeping the large overseas deployment and the United States keeping the, okay, soldiers, our soldiers across the world, many different countries. But I have to emphasize that, and also the probably many of, many of you didn't know this fact. Okay, Japan is the largest host country of the overseas deployment of the United States. Okay, the United States actually, okay, as I said, this is the year, okay, this is the number of the year 2016. Okay, actually it's fractured, okay, year by year. But about 40,000 American soldiers regularly stationed, permanently stationed on Japanese island. Okay, of course, if you include the okay, temporary assignment, lots more. Okay, always, okay, as uh, the, 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 the station on Japanese island using the, main, okay, the US facility, island of Japan. And, okay, as I said here, other top country of the hosting the US deployment overseas is including Germany, South Korea, Italy, and most recently because of the nature of the most recent war, Afghanistan. But you can easily understand, okay, this ranking. Okay, many of the, okay, this is not the history of the, okay, not the class of the American foreign history, but uh, this ranking, you can easily understand that, okay, major deployment are stationed in the, those countries which are defeated by the United States, allied, okay, Axis power, okay, Germany, Italy, and South Korea used to be the Japanese colony, and uh, so you can easily understand that this is a sort of the overseas deployment is a legacy of the Cold War, Conf okay, uh, I'm sorry, World War II, okay? Uh, the, we will discuss about this later, okay, next, okay? And so therefore, okay, right now, as I said, okay, uh, the, the, okay, except for the, okay, by nature, okay, Coastal Guard is not stationed on the, Jap okay, is not stationing on the Japanese island, but the other U.S. Armed Forces, all of them are present, okay? Other Navy, Marine Corps, and also the Air Force, and Army, its number is, high, okay, a bit limited compared with other branches, because, okay, major forces of the army, okay, in Asia has Pacific are stationed, okay, stationing on the South Korean Peninsula because of its nature. But anyway, all of these forces are right now stationed in Japan, okay, and, uh, okay, I'm going to show you the, okay, I found, okay, one minute video clip, okay, uh, that's why I'm going to show you this one. An alliance that has remained indispensable to our mutual security and to the peace, stability, and prosperity of the Asia-Pacific region. We are soldiers, sailors, airmen, and marines. Our mission, support the U.S.-Japan Security Alliance, conduct security cooperation with the government of Japan in order to maintain regional stability and deter aggression. When directed, conduct operations in response to regional contingencies. U.S. PACOM's forward deployed force. We are U.S. Forces Japan. Okay, and this is an important aspect, okay, as I said, okay. And, uh, okay, as I said, so because, okay, United States keeping the large deployment overseas, actually, literally, okay, across Japan, you can find U.S. military facility bases across Japan. Okay, as I okay, indicated, okay, oh, okay, yes, okay, this is a map, 
of Japan. And across Japan, you can find the military facility across, okay, okay, in Japan. And some of them are the important, and some of them are less important, clearly. But the one of the famous one is called Yokosuka Naval Base. Yokosuka Naval Base is actually, okay, I have my, my own personal experience. Okay, Yokosuka is a city, okay, as located at the mouth of the Tokyo Bay. And uh, Yokosuka, okay, as a first, oh, I'm sorry, so Yokosuka, Yokosuka is, okay, this is, okay, as a, the most, first of all, importantly, this is a, okay, as a home port of the Seventh Fleet, and also carrier strike group five, okay, as a flagship, okay, as a most important, okay, carrier strike group five, okay, number six, including Ronald Rodega, okay, as an aircraft carrier. And uh, this is the only, Air, okay, air strike carrier group, or strike groups permanently stationed outside the United States. Right now, the United States have the 10, okay, uh, the, the, the air strike, okay, carrier, okay, ca okay, carrier air strike groups, but uh, only one of them permanently stationed outside of Japan, uh, outside of the United States. That is now, okay, Yokosuka Naval Base. And why I'm mentioning this? Okay, because I, I have personal experience with this. Okay, my hometown is actually just 10 miles from this, okay, as a U.S. basis, okay, U.S. Yokosuka naval basis. So therefore, the, okay, as a, okay, you know, the, often the U.S. military, okay, facilities have the friendship day type of things, opening up, okay, local community. And I can, actually, I have a chance to go inside. And the flagship of the U.S., okay, as a seventh fleet is named Blue Ditch. This, okay, and actually this is on board of that U.S. bridge I actually, okay, as I went aboard on this ship. But anyway, so the, from the, okay, my, okay, as a childhood, I have, okay, close experience, okay, close interaction with, okay, American forces, okay, because of the nature of the, my, okay, my neighborhood. Okay, this is my ba personal background. Okay, but as I said, okay, this type of the bases you can find across Japan. Some of them important, okay, Katena Air Base is uh, one of the largest, okay, the, this is the largest actually, the, okay, Air Force bases, okay, Pas okay Asia Pacific, okay, United States is holding. And Camp Zama is a place where, okay, the headquarters of the U.S. forces is located, okay, our U.S. forces in Japan is located, okay. And so counterpart, okay, I just talked about the U.S. forces, okay, U.S. and Japan security forces, uh, this is the team, okay, team of the, Okay American, okay, American, okay, American armed forces and Japanese armed forces. So I'm going to briefly talk about the Japanese National Army, which we call Japan, okay, National Safety, okay, Japan Safety Defense Forces, JSDF. Okay, this National Army was created back in 1954, and today, okay, have the active duty members, about 24, okay, 2,500,000 of them, and uh, as I stated here, okay, one of the most powerful national army at this stage, okay, as according to the one ranking, okay, as in terms of the firepower, this is, a, okay, as the seventh most powerful national army, okay, coming, okay, United States is the first, clearly, followed by Russia, China, India, France, and the UK, and five, okay, then Japan came, okay, and Japanese military budget also, okay, spending a good amount of the budget, Okay, even though the, it's, this is less than the target, okay, as uh, President Trump is promoting, right now the President Trump is asking the okay, allied countries to spend 2% of the GDP, but unfortunately Japan is missing that target. But uh, this number is a bit tricky, I'm going to discuss later. But anyway, Japan is, okay, the also the largest, naturally the largest, one of the largest spender of the military budget. Okay, and so therefore the Japan possessed, okay, Japan is an advanced economy, so the possessing the first rate advanced weapon system, okay, as a picture I'm showing here is the Japan's f 2 jet fighters, and also the Aegis miss, okay, missile cruiser, okay, as uh, this equipped with the advanced okay, missile defense system. So the, okay, this is a Japanese partner, okay, and U.S. forces stationed in Japan, and this JSDF, okay, Okay, Japanese national okay, self-defense forces are teaming together and try to help not only the Japanese okay, national self-defense, also try to okay, preserve, okay, promote peace in Asia, which okay, is a big picture, okay, the basic picture of the U.S.-Japan Security Alliance. And historical background, okay, first I would like to briefly discuss about this okay, U.S.-Japan National Security, okay, U.S.-Japan Security Alliance. 
Okay, this US-Japan Security Alliance came to be, okay, ca came to be formed against two important backgrounds. First background is, I'm going to do, United States occupied, okay, after 1945, 1945, Japan was defeated, accepted military surrender, and then, um, okay, more importantly, probably the more important context is the cold, okay, context of the Cold War. Okay, first, okay, as a US occupation, okay, I, uh, you, okay, you pretty, okay, all of you understand pretty well. Okay, December 7th, 1945, Japan, okay, conducted surprise attack on Pearl Harbor. And then war started. And this war was devastating, but eventually, okay, as in part, okay, use of the, okay, the first time use of the atomic bomb, okay, Hiroshima and Nagasaki. Japan, August, okay, as uh, the 15th, 1945, Japan accepted unconditional surrender. So from that day until 90, okay, 1952, seven years, United States placed Japan under the, its military control. Okay, and the top leader of this, okay, US occupation is General, okay, as a General Douglas MacArthur, MacArthur. Okay, and the, his picture is, I'm showing there, next to him, standing, okay, Japanese guy, this is a Japanese emperor. Okay, this is a moment of the okay, encounter of the two former enemies, okay, finally making peace type of the situation. And the, but anyway, as a, okay, as a, okay, MacArthur, probably many of you hear about his story. Okay, he has some sort of the charismatic characteristics. So therefore, he wants to be, okay, leave his name in the history. So therefore, he tried to change, okay, sort of the, okay, uh, the whole sales Okay, he tried to fundamentally change, remake Japanese society on his image. Okay, so therefore he conducted lots of the okay, social, political, economic reform on Japanese society during the, okay, these seven years, okay, US occupation. And one of the most important legacy left by the MacArthur and plus US occupation was, uh, okay, as a, okay, as a okay, new constitution. Japan used to have a different constitution, but uh, under the demand of the, okay, as a MacArthur and also US occupation forces, Japanese people are required to adopt new constitution. But uh, this new constitution in reality actually drafted by the American officials. Initially, okay, uh, the American government, okay, okay, MacArthur, okay, ordered Japanese officials to draft new constitutions, but the Japanese side can never come up with a draft which satisfies the demand of the MacArthur and the United States. So therefore, the eventually, MacArthur decided to team up, okay, create a team of the American officials and ask order them to draft, okay, Japanese new constitution. And this new constitution was eventually adopted by Japanese and until today, okay, as any character of this constitution changed. So still in effect, okay, in place at this moment. Okay, but uh, this new constitution has a very special characteristics, okay, as a primary because of the, this famous non-war clause, so-called article, okay, non-war clause, exactly speaking, Article 9. This Article 9 is a very special clause, okay, as a, I just, uh, okay, I just, okay, as a, the, the, okay, indicated, okay, display the actual text of the Article 9. Article 9, okay, consists of the two paragraphs. First paragraph reads, aspiring sincerely to the international peace based on justice and order. Japanese people, however, denounce war as a sovereign right of the nation and the state use of the horses as means of the settling the international disputes. Okay, those students who took my, okay, uh, the POLS 117 or the other international relations class understood, okay, understand this fact pretty well. Okay, uh, the most important characteristic of the today's global politics is what we call international anarchy. Okay, there is no world government. There is no sovereign power. So therefore, okay, basically, the, okay, under the interna okay, modern international okay, law, okay, all countries under some certain conditions legally allowed to start a war okay, against other countries to solve okay, to defend their pro, okay, defend their ne okay, national self-defense and also the to solve international problem, uh, international problem. Okay, most fundamentally, okay, other, uh, okay, point is international, okay, today's international legal system, war, okay, waging war against 
other countries understand the condition is legal, can be justified. But this Article 9 is a very, okay, going against this trend because they, okay, the, under this, okay, other, okay, Article 9, Japanese people pledge never exercise such sovereign right of exercising, okay, declaring war against other countries. Okay, so therefore this is called non-war clause. This is highly unusual clause. And next paragraph is also highly unusual. In order to, okay, in order to accomplish the aim of the preceding paragraph, land, sea, air horses, as well as other war potential never be maintained. The right of the belligerency of the state will, be never, never, will not be recognized. Okay, under this treaty, okay, uh, the, 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 okay, uh, I'm sorry, under this article, okay, not only Japanese people Okay, abandoning the sovereign right of the initiating war against other countries. Also, in addition to that, in order to make sure this promise will be maintained, pledge not to possess armed forces whatsoever. This is the meaning of the Article 9. But as we discussed just now, in reality, Japan, Japanese people has a, okay, has a very flexible interpretation about this Article 9. Okay, and so Japan today has a very large, okay, strong national army. That is a reality. But uh, historically speaking, this is an important, okay, starting point for the U.S.-Japan Security Alliance, because, okay, as a, because of the Article Nine, okay, when Japan got independence back in 1952, there was no national army. There was no nothing to protect the Japanese them, by themselves. So therefore, the, when Japan, United States, returned the independence to the, okay. Okay, as a sovereignty to the Japanese side, okay, they okay, as have some sort of the moral obligation, okay, to, to, to defend Japan because okay, this Article 9 was imposed by the United States, okay, and unfortunately, this is a very okay, as a okay, historical irony exists. As soon as okay, United, okay, this Article 9 was adopted back in nine, okay, just two years after, okay, start of the occupation, 1947. Okay, but a few years after 1947, I'm talking about 1949, 1950s, United American leader directed this imposition of the Article 9 because of the start of the Cold War confrontation. Okay, the, okay when Article 9 was imposed by Japanese, okay, the purpose of American leader is to make Japanese okay, as weak as possible. Never again, you know, okay, Japanese will challenge okay, United States. That is assumption. But uh, unexpectedly, next big conflict started. This time, enemy is Soviet Union. And the United States wants to have as many allies as possible. Therefore, okay, suddenly, okay, they start to degrade Article 9 and actually start to push Japanese to delight, okay, uh, the Article 9. But never, okay, Japanese people, irony is once, okay, imposed by this, okay, American, okay, occupation, Japanese people came to love this article. So therefore they resisted. So eventually sort of the middle ground solution was adopted and Japanese people okay, accepted, okay, creating a okay, okay, JSDF, JSDF, Japanese Safe Defense Forces, and gradually okay, uh, the, the, the start the process of the rearmament. So therefore the, over the, okay, this is a graph of the Japanese military budget. Okay, last seven decades or so, substantially Japanese okay, military expenditure increased. So today, Okay, Article 9, to be honest, from my perspective, this is an empty document. Okay, completely hold, okay, uh, hold, okay, hold out. But uh, still, this is a symbol of the America's still remaining occupation. Okay, uh, the remaining symbol of the American occupation. And this is the first reason why the U.S.-Japan Security Alliance was formed. But more important, okay, other the reason why the U.S.-Japan Security Alliance was formed, I just okay, discussed the logic of the Cold War. Okay, the Cold War started, okay, Cold War initially is a European event, but the eventually soon turned into the global event, particularly Cold War reaching Asia Pacific side, okay, because of the, okay, success of the Chinese Communist Revolution back in 1949, and plus, okay, uh, the, the Korean War, Korean War happened, also Korean War is today's, okay, uh, the starting point of the Okay, today's nuclear crisis. But anyway, because of this Cold War, okay, conf okay these two development, okay, Asia also becomes a major front line of the Cold War confrontation. And the Cold War, United States, okay, wanted to conduct, okay, as uh, a containment strategy. Containment strategy is idea, 
okay, as I'm going to show you, okay, as a, okay, basically the physically going to encircle Soviet Union and communist camp by military means. Okay, we are going to create a global alliance system. Okay, I'm going to try to, okay. can you see my red point? Yes, okay, this Soviet Union and the communist camp plus China and the East, okay, Eastern Europe. This is, these are the main force of the communist China, uh, communist camp and Okay, idea of the containment is United States is going to create big military circle to okay, contain, physically contain Soviet horses. Okay, so that never again Soviet horses start to once again expand. Okay, because those days the conviction of the American leader is Soviet Union. Okay, most simply Joseph Stalin is aiming at world domination. Okay, to stop it. Okay, United States, particularly the Eisenhower and plus his secretary, Okay, hostile Dallas, okay, as the United States created global alliance system. And then European side, okay, this alliance system today known as NATO, North Atlantic Treaty Organization. And the United States also created, okay, as a system, okay, alliance system, okay, Asia Pacific. Okay, United States created a bilateral alliance system like such countries like Japan, South Korea, okay, initially Taiwan included, also Australia, okay. Uh, these are the allied countries, okay, of the United States. So therefore, the initially, okay, uh, the, the purpose of the U.S.-Japan Security Alliance was containment strategy to check Soviet expansion. And U.S.-Japan Security Alliance is one of the most important link of the, this system of the military encirclement. And, okay, often American, okay, uh, the, the military planner compared Japanese status as unsinkable aircraft carrier because Japan is an island country off the coast, okay, but uh, this is a natural island, never sink. So therefore, okay, be, okay, attacked by some other countries, so often characterized by the unsinkable sinker, okay, and actual war happened to, major war actually happened in the Asia, okay, Asian front during the Cold War era, I'm talking about the Korean War and Vietnam War. Both war, okay, as uh, the US basis on Japanese island, used as a very important key center of the Okay, uh, the power deployment, okay, uh, the soldiers deployment, and also logistics. Okay, for example, okay, I'm talking about the Vietnam War. Many of the soldiers, young soldiers sent, to, sent from here, okay, uh, they usually go through the Japanese port, okay, before arriving in Vietnam. And if they are injured, 80% of the injured American soldiers sent back to the hospital on the Japanese island. Okay, take treatment and also the many of the okay, military equipment okay, produced and fixed okay, or by using the Japanese factories. So therefore, the okay, Cold War history, okay, Japan was an important link of the global alliance system. Okay? But okay, my point is, okay, from here, it's okay, focus of the today's discussion. Okay, uh, the Cold War ended in 1991. Soviet Union disappeared. So therefore, the discussion naturally emerged. Is there any meanings for us to continue to keep this alliance system, okay? Original mission, okay? Original mission of the called, okay, U.S.-Japan Security Alliance is containment. Now Soviet Union disappeared. No more need for the containment. So therefore, the, okay, back in those days, okay, both in Tokyo and also Washington, this is there's a discussion about the future of the, okay, uh, the U.S.-Japan Security Alliance and eventually, both countries' leader, okay, came to agree that we should continue to keep this, okay, alliance relationship, okay, primarily for two reasons. First, okay, uh, the, 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 okay, if you look at the Europe, maybe, okay, peace recovered, okay, also, or therefore the, the risk of the war maybe become much, much lower, but still, okay, Asia Pacific side, okay, uh, the lots of the, okay, substantial risk remained. Okay, as uh, back in 1993, okay, as uh, oh, I'm sorry, current, okay, uh, as the, the, the actually the back in 1993, okay, the first crisis, first round of the today's North Korea's nuclear, nuclear crisis started, okay, and uh, this is okay, like 1995, 1993, 1994, okay, uh, the, 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 like today, those days, Clinton, okay, President Clinton. <coughs> President Clinton's team, his advisor, okay, his team of the national advisor, okay, national security advisors, seriously discuss option of the military action as okay today President Trump team is doing. 
Okay, so, okay, that moment, 1993, okay, the risk of the nuclear war, okay, not nuclear war, but uh, the war with North Korea was similarly high. Okay, eventually, I will discuss later, but uh, okay, United States, okay, successfully negotiated, okay, uh, the, have the, okay, successful diplomatic negotiation, eventually North Korea backed down. So therefore, the crisis was over. But uh, okay, this crisis continues, and also another crisis is related to the rising power of China. 1994, okay, uh, the, the, this is a year. Okay, uh, the Taiwanese government conducted first presidential, okay, democratic presidential election, and the Russian Beijing leader afraid that this, okay, Taiwan's democratization might make leading to the declaration of the independence by the new government. So therefore, they conducted, okay. As a missile exercise, neighboring sea to scare Taiwanese government, incoming new government, so to signal, to deter such okay, uh, the, 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 the adventure ask action by the Beijing government. Actually, the, those day, once again, President Clinton decided to send aircraft carrier to the, these regions, make them sail through the okay, Taiwan Strait, signaling that if something happened, the United States also intervened. Okay, so all of this okay situation, okay, uh, the, the, the contingency of development makes okay once again aware both American leader, Japanese leader of the continuing danger, the security risk on this in this region. This is the first reason, okay, why the okay this alliance system was okay detained, and also there is an important okay appreciation of the okay complementarity or the okay uh, the, the the okay. So many years, nearly five decades, okay, the Japanese forces and the US forces working together. Through this process, they come to accumulate many know-how of the cooperation and also the practical experience of the cooperation. And this, okay, came to be regarded as asset by the asset by both countries' leaders. So therefore, okay, both countries, okay, uh, the country's leader decided to move to the, okay, rather than scrapping this, okay, alliance try to redefine, give new mission to the, this okay, US-Japan Security Alliance. So therefore, I'm going to explain briefly what happened in okay, this space. Okay, as, uh, as I said, both countries' leader okay, initially has somewhat doubts about the future of the alliance. So therefore, the, they ordered okay, professionals to conduct major review of the US-Japan Security Alliance system. And eventually, Okay, two major reports was produced by both Jap okay, Japanese side and American side. Okay, so-called Higuchi report and Nai Initiative. Nai is the name of the Joseph Nai. He's a political scientist, but those day he was okay Harvard professor. But those day he was okay as a okay, okay assistant secretary of defense for international affairs. Under him, he okay he organized a team of the specialized specialist and okay discuss about studied about the future value of the alliance, okay? And eventually both report, strategic rep, okay, debut, leading to the okay, confirmation of the value of the continued relationship. So therefore, okay, uh, the, 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 okay, first of all, okay, this is a picture. Okay, as I said, okay, as back in 1993, 1994, okay, the tension between United States and North Korea was similarly high, and President Clinton, seriously consider the military option back in those years. Okay, but uh, this crisis, okay, unfortunately at that time, okay, uh, the United States could make diplomatic breakthrough by doing what? By sending the Jimmy Carter, actually make him visit city of Pyongyang and directly negotiate Kim Il-sung. Okay, those days Kim Il-sung founder was still alive. Okay, this, okay, uh, the diplomatic, okay, okay, diplomatic, okay, uh, the, uh, I'm sorry, diplomatic, oh, for, for, sorry. Diplomatic, okay, uh, the, 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 the diplomatic effort was successful, so we can avoid war. But uh, those days, okay, uh, the, the, the risk of the, okay, risk of the, okay, uh, the chance of the actual military operation was similarly high. Okay, against the big background, okay, and also the okay, strategic review, okay, Prime Minister Hashimoto, uh, Prime Minister Hashimoto, that is, uh, okay, the, the, the Japanese minister those days, Prime Minister those days, Clinton, decided to devise Okay, uh, the, the, the guideline for the U.S.-Japan defense cooperation. This is actual document which describe okay scheme of the opera okay cooperation operational level when military action is needed. Okay, military alliance is, is not something. Okay, 
are the just speech area, we are helping each other. You have to have the exact detailed planning, okay? If once something happens, operational level, battlefield, logistics, okay? Both forces need to be combined together. So therefore, the okay, advanced planning is needed, okay? And the, okay, and the, so, okay, what happened is, okay, uh, the here, 90, back in the 1990s, okay, 1996, the Japanese side, Japanese Prime Minister and, okay, President Clinton, okay, came to agree to devise this basic scheme of the military cooperation. Why? Because, okay, in order to upgrade U.S.-Japan Security Alliance, we have to adjust to the new circumstances. During the Cold War era, if war happens, okay, ever happens, that war is likely to the all-out nuclear war. Soviet Union, United States exchanging the big military weapons, and okay, which side can remain kind of the discussion, okay, is a basic idea of the, okay, uh, the war planning those days. But uh, now we, we have to expect much more limited military conflict, like the war with North Korea. So there was a new kind of the okay, scheme of the military cooperation is okay, operational level is needed. So therefore the Japanese side and the US side decided to upgrade okay, uh, the, 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 the US, uh, okay, US Japan Security Alliance in this direction. Okay, and also okay, another important development is okay, uh, the, the war in Iraq and Afghanistan. Okay, in response to the September 11th attack, United States okay, enter the war Okay, starts a war in Iraq, uh, Afghanistan first, and then in the Iraq. And okay, as uh, the, the, the okay, as uh, from the beginning, okay, as uh, between the Tokyo, uh, Washington, and Tokyo, diplomats or military okay manager, military planner of the, these two capitals, there's a strong consensus that Japan should also take part in okay America's effort, war efforts in Middle East even though this is not a part of the regularly, usually, okay, mid-alliance supposed to cover. So, okay, so, okay, this is an Asia-Pacific, okay, alliance, but, uh, okay, now, okay, two countries did, uh, in order to give the new definition, okay, new meaning to the alliance, alliance needs to be globalized, not just taking care of the Asia-Pacific peace, more, okay, okay, this team, okay, the spirit of the cooperation, team spirit needs to be globalized, so that United States and Japan can be acted together worldwide. Okay, hold that understanding, okay, United, okay, actually Japanese, okay, uh, the Japanese, okay, okay, naval self-defense forces assisted, okay, America's operation in Indian Ocean in the context of the Afghanistan war, and also Japanese ground troops sent to the Iraq, okay, uh, the southern Iraq, okay, there's a city named, named Samawa. Okay, and Japanese troops were there and helped, okay, as a part of the US occupation of the Iraq, helped reconstruction effort over there. And most recently, okay, this is a, a bit technical discussion continues, but please allow me, okay, okay, as a most recent development is the initiative of the current Prime Minister. Current Prime Minister, Japanese Prime Minister is named Prime Minister Shinzo Abe. And he, okay, as a change, uh, Okay, this is highly technical, but uh, okay, he changed the Japanese okay, government's official interpretation of the Article 9, and Japan okay, decided to exercise okay, so-called right of the self, okay, collective defense. Once again, okay, with this okay, uh, the initiative okay, as a guideline for the military cooperation is updated. Okay, these are the some of the okay, key development. Okay, big picture, okay, concrete development, concrete step taken by the okay, uh, the two countries. Okay, big picture is possible, okay. Once again, okay, United, U.S. Security Japan, okay, U.S. Japan Security Alliance was created initially as part of the Cold War containment strategy, but the Cold War ended, okay. So therefore, the, but still, both country leaders came to agree that this is a variable, corporate, okay, or the friendship and the cooperation arrangement. We should not scrap it, rather should give new missions. So therefore, the last two decades or so, Okay, consistent effort has been made to redefine, upgrade, okay, uh, the, the U.S.-Japan Security Alliance, okay, and some of the key aspects achieved through this process is first, okay, as of now, as I said, okay, alliance reach is, okay, start to cover the, okay, entire U.S. global strategy, okay, as of during the Cold War era, this is a system, subsystem of the U.S. Cold War, okay, 
as a containment threat just covers concerned about Asia Pacific. Now, okay, United States and Jap okay, Japan, particularly, willing to act as a D, okay, American military partner, global, worldwide. Okay, sending the okay ready to send the American or Japanese military forces across the world. So therefore, the okay are the, the one of the okay. I'm not really sure this will become the eventually okay actually becomes okay realized. But uh, some of the okay American policy okay military planner wants to change Japan into the Britain of Far East, meaning that okay Britain and the United States has a very special responsibility and the level of the cooperation okay particularly the security area between United States and okay, Britain is much, much okay, deeper and broader compared <coughs> with other allies. We share the, all of the essential intelligence information and also the Britain is always with our military okay, operation. So therefore the okay, idea is okay, pushing Japanese. Okay, Japanese has a, okay, some hesitancy on this, but uh, some of the American policymakers wants to make okay, United States, okay, Japan act as Britain Far East version. This is a big picture. Okay, and also another okay important aspect is okay, as I said, okay, the scheme of military cooperation, okay, once again, okay, uh, the, 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 the revised, okay, uh, the okay the actual operational scheme of the military cooperation deepened and also upgraded. Okay, and uh, today, okay, are uh, the Japanese military forces, okay, to be honest, okay, Japan has a okay seven largest okay as I said Japan is has a seven largest powerful okay Japanese na okay national army that okay has a fire fire power seven largest okay seven most powerful okay fire power but uh, in reality Japanese national army has no ability to act alone okay Japanese weapon system and also the okay uh, okay disposition of the okay national forces so designed to complement American forces operation in Asia Pacific. So the okay today, okay, these countries, okay, national forces are really, okay, really, okay, deeply integrated together. Okay, and the, so therefore the, okay, as you can see these pictures, okay, joint exercise, joint operation is a common, okay, uh, the, the happening today. And okay, another important aspect of the today's okay alliance formation is okay as uh, today Okay, as I said, okay, U.S.-Japan Security Alliance is no more just talking about the bilateral relationship between Japan and the United States. Rather, okay, this becomes the okay, most important, okay, fundamental basis for the American strategy for Asia Pacific. Particularly, United States right now keeping the five major treaty allies in Asia Pacific. Okay, starting with Japan, South Korea, Thailand, Philippines, and Australia. And we have the security alliance relationship, okay, each of these countries. But right now, okay, uh, the sort of the regional system is building, start to emerge among these, okay, five treaty allies plus more informal security partner like India on the basis of the, okay, security, okay, U.S.-Japan security alliance. So the U.S. security alliance is becoming a sort of the public good for the, okay, other okay, America's allied countries on which, okay, uh, the, 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 the various security cooperation is being conducted. So therefore, the, okay, some of the Japanese, okay, some of the experts, okay, okay, predicting and proposing creation of the NATO type of the regional security system on the basis of the U.S.-Japan Security Alliance. Okay, and this is what, okay, what happened, has happened in the last two decades or so. Now I would like, oh, before that, I would like to briefly, briefly discuss this issue. Okay, I just talked about the military aspect, but uh, also, okay, there's a, another, okay, bright spot, okay, bright aspect of the, this bilateral relationship. As I'm talking about, uh, okay, earthquake back in the 2011. Okay, 2011, there was a major earthquake hit, okay, Japanese, okay, hit, okay, which hit the northern part of the Japan and caused, okay, uh, the, the huge tsunami and eventually killed 20,000 okay, Japanese people. But anyway, okay, in this okay, natural disaster, United States actually provided a very important okay, as a hand of help to the Japanese society okay, by using, by mobilizing the American forces stationed on Japan. And actually, okay, uh, the United States conducted, okay, US forces in, in Japan conducted 
okay, are the, 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 the Mitai operation, okay, Risky operation, named tomo, okay, Operation Tomodachi. Okay, I'm going to show you the brief video clip I found. toward the sounds of chaos with the courage and compassion to silence it. Okay, and the point is, okay, uh, the, now the, okay, the uh, cooperation is not limited to the just, okay, military security aspect. Okay, also the civilian life is, okay, will be greatly helped. And particularly the Japanese people still remember this, okay, as uh, the, the American assistance and also Okay, actually, the, okay, a uh, okay, few years ago, still the, okay, there are people, particularly the left, right, okay, left wing people who are okay, opposing against continued alliance with the United States, but uh, with this event, okay, uh, the, the, the opinions about the continued relationship with the United States turn positive, definitely. Okay, and okay, from now, I briefly discuss about the more okay, current, oh, before that, okay, uh, the, Okay, this is a very, okay, as a practical, relevant to the today's policy discussion, policy discourse of the public discourse of this nation. Okay, in the United States right now, okay, uh, the, there is a groaning opinion. Okay, some policy makers start to argue that, okay, United States built up the, during the Cold War era, lots of the ally, okay, alliance, starting with NATO and the US-Japan Security Alliance. And uh, some of the American policy makers, okay, strongly argue that. Okay, this is a system letting okay, America's allies, like Japan, just free light. Okay, uh, the Japanese security umbrella, umbrella. It's not fair arrangement. Okay, uh, the particular, probably you remember that during the okay, presidential okay, campaign, pre okay, several occasions, okay, candidate, those day, okay, candidate Trump, okay, President Trump, okay, uh, the cre clearly criticized okay, uh, the, the European allies' attitude and particularly suggested the possibility of the scrapping completely the NATO, traditional NATO. Okay, and the, but, uh, okay, I have to 
okay, as an expert on the working on the US-Japan Security Alliance, I have to at least, okay, needs to bring up two important facts, which often missed in the discussion of the, this type of the discussion in the United States public discourse. First is, okay, uh, the, 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 okay, many American people don't know the fact of the host nation support, okay? Uh, the whenever United States stationed, okay, uh, the troops overseas, okay, allied country hosting that country provide at least some sort of the financial assistance to cover some portion of the, okay, stationing cost. This is called host nation status, uh, host nation support. And in the case of Japan, okay, we are providing the really large host nation support, okay? As I have only, okay, old number, particularly because, okay, DOD is generally hesitant to disclose this, like, this kind of the number. But uh, according back to the year 2002, this is the most actually disclosed estimate. Uh, the okay, Japanese host nation status is about 40,400,000, okay, 40, okay, okay 4,411 million US dollars. This actually ho okay, accounted for the three quarter of the stationing cost of the US forces in Japan, okay? And this, okay, other countries like Germany, South Korea also similarly provide some sort of the financial assistance, but the clearly Japan provided the by far the largest financial assistance to the United States to help the United States to, okay, continue the, okay, other to, to, to retain the US facility on the Japanese ground. So, okay, this is a, a bit, okay, sometimes inconvenient fact for the some political opinions, but the bottom line is it is cheaper to station okay, American troops in Japan than station in United States, okay? And uh, so this, okay, when we discuss about, okay, this alliance relationship, we tend to just look at, okay, the United, okay, official number of the budget and the weakness of the national forces of our countries, and they are relying on the America's security umbrella. This is, this image is a bit one-sided. Okay, reality is this America's stationing is financially supported by the okay, allied countries like Japanese cases. We have the, okay, provided the, okay, good part, good portion of the stationing cost of the US, okay, US forces in Japan. Okay, and second point, okay, this also, okay, sometimes misunderstand, okay, uh, the misunderstood. The primary mission of the US forces in Japan is not to protect, to defend Japan, okay? Japan has its own national army. Primary responsibility of the defending Japan is, of course, rest with our national army, safe defense forces. Why then United States is okay, keeping the major deployment over there? United States wants to use these US bases as an important platform for the power projection. Okay, okay whenever they conduct military operation, Asia, Pacific, Indian Ocean, Japanese bases, uh, becomes an important platform for the power projection, bringing, okay, soldiers and also, okay, uh, the, the logistics. Okay, for example, today, if something happens, okay, at this moment, North Korea, war actually started, the core of the U.S. forces are mobilized from the forces, okay, stationed in Japan, okay, like the Marine Corps, okay, Marine Corps stationed on the Okinawa, and also the, okay, na naval forces, okay, navies, okay, either Yokosuka or the Sasebo will be mobilized, okay? So therefore, okay, the primary purpose of the Article 9, okay, not just Japanese national, okay, U.S.-Japan security, particularly the, the purpose of the U.S. forces in Japan is not protect Japan per se. If really Japan being attacked by some other country, yes, United States must help. But uh, before that, okay, if Japan will be some, okay, hit, hit by some other country, some other development will happen. And the United States will need to take action, okay, broader context, okay? So then, okay, United States wants to use, okay, as these, okay, okay, uh, the, the U.S. bases. For example, another example is United States, okay, uh, the, the Afghanistan, okay, and also the Iraq. United States conducted, okay, jet fighter conducted lots of the ideal bombing campaign. All of these jet fighter, not all, but many of the jet fighter actually sent from the Japanese, okay, the, the U.S. bases, you have, you have, uh, you have U.S. Air Force bases on Japanese islands. So therefore, the, today, okay, Jap okay, American forces is not staying on Japanese island to protect Japanese I Japanese people. That is a long message. This is okay, uh, the part of the America's global strategy, global 
okay, strategy and okay, for that purpose, okay, these okay, horses stationed over there. Okay, having said that, okay, I would like to touch on briefly, okay, current issue of the global politics, okay, gl okay, regional politics, particularly the, okay, the issue of the North Korea and also the rise of the Chinese power, because these are the two important issues, okay, affecting, facing the, okay, U.S.-Japan Security Alliance. Okay, first of all, North Korea's nuclear crisis, and always whenever I ask, okay, ask for the, my opinions about Okay, uh, the, 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 the situation, okay, uh, the realistic, okay, possibility of the war on Korean Peninsula today. My answer is always war should not be likely. Okay, from my perspective, war is not a practical option for the United States. Because uh, if something happens, okay, cost is too much. And, okay, United States, nor, okay, other Korean people or Japanese people willing to endure such cost. That is a reality. Why this came about? Because, okay, if you want to start to understand the, okay, posture of the, okay, military forces, actually, okay, are the, the local scenes. Okay, first of all, uh, the, 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 the city of Seoul, okay, capital city of Seoul, okay, capital city of North Korea, uh, I'm sorry, South Korea is so closely located to the border of the, okay, border with North Korea. Okay, just, 15 miles away from North Korean border. Meaning that if something happens, okay, right now the America has three options, okay, okay, we discuss. Okay, I'm talking about uh, okay, how we deal with North Korea. There are three options. First is, okay, diplomatic negotiation. Try to persuade them to give up the nuclearization, nuclear program. Second is so-called surgical operation, okay? Uh, the, the, okay, bloody nose operation type of things, okay, if I using the jargon, okay, meaning that we conduct, okay, as a, air, okay, airstrike, limited airstrike targeted, specifically targeted at nuclear facility on North Korea, destroy the nuclear facility without committing the ground troops. And final option is committing the ground troops and started traditional full scale war. And so the data two options. Whichever, okay, except for the first option. Right now, two options. Whichever we take, okay, we should expect immediate counter reaction from North Korea. That counter reaction is likely to be devastating. Meaning that, okay, as I said, already North, okay, South Korea is, okay, South Korean city capital is so close to the border. So therefore, the ones we either commit ground forces or the just okay limited air strikes are targeted against nuclear okay nuclear facility immediately, Kim Jong Un will okay deteriorate by okay in the case of the okay North okay South Korea okay city of Korea easily okay they okay are the, the bombard okay bombarding okay are the good part of the okay all parts of the okay, Korean city according at, at least okay. Actually, one estimate says that one million people, one, okay, one million casualties should be expected, injured or killed, okay? And also, not only this that kind of damage, not on, okay, just not limited to the, okay, okay, Korean people. Japanese should expect a similar kind of the, okay, uh, the, the, the casualty because, okay, we are now talking about the long range missile development of the North Korea. But, the, okay, long time ago, okay, so North Korea already established Okay, strong capability of the deploying short range, middle range missile, which can reach Japanese soil easily. They have at least 1,000 of them or something like that, and they can deliver major, okay, uh, the, 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 yes, not, if not nuclear weapons, but uh, they can deliver chemical weapons and also biological weapons. And also, okay, if one of such missiles can hit, okay, nuclear power plant on the Japanese coast, that also causes devastating Okay, effect. So therefore, from my perspective, whenever I asked about the possibility of the, okay, uh, the, the, the war, North Korea, okay, how likely type of the question, my answer is always, okay, practically speaking, okay, it should not have happened. Okay, it should not have, it should not happen. Okay, I, I cannot read the mind of the President Trump, unfortunately, so that I cannot say anything for sure, but uh, if you, okay, cool mind, okay, prevail, war should not happen should not happen. Okay, rational thinking, any rational thinking leading to the conclusion, war is unrealistic, too costly, we cannot endure. Okay, having said that, 
okay, this reality posing the very serious dilemma for us, meaning that if North Korea, okay, as a diplomatic negotiation failed, so therefore they cannot, they, they never give up their nuclear program. They can just go ahead to develop nuclear weapons. And, okay, we cannot, okay, ex, okay, resort to the, okay, resort to the military option. Then, end the result is eventually North Korea will become an established nuclear power. That moment, we will face really serious dilemma, which is a serious risk of the nuclear dominant effect of e in East Asia. Meaning that once North Korea becomes an established nuclear power, okay, probably the, okay, that push South Korean people, Japanese people, even the other, okay, Asian people also become nuclear. So therefore, the, this may be the first pin of the domino. Okay, uh, the, 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 so therefore, the, okay, so then, okay, uh, the, one of the jokes, okay, we often, okay, we expertly say that if North Korea become nuclear, then, okay, uh, the South Korea will be, be, become nuclear. Then Japanese also will become nuclear. And then Taiwan will become nuclear. At that moment, end of the story, because Beijing will never okay, let Taiwan become nuclear. So there was a start of the big nuclear war involving the United States. But uh, this kind of joke is not bec may become the reality. Okay, this is a serious risk of the nuclear dominant effect. So therefore, okay, at this moment, okay, there is no easy answer to this question. Okay, we are facing the really, okay, deep dilemma. At this moment, North Korea's situation. Okay, this is the first point. Okay, and second, okay, we need to talk about another issue, China's military built up. China is not only getting richer, okay, and expanding its economy, financial power is increasing, but the problem is, okay, it also building up the very strong military, for, okay, military forces, okay? And, uh, okay, many of the American people, okay, American analysts, okay, are uh, the doubt whether China is willing to respect international order United States created, nurtured since the end of the World War II, system of the international law or the respect of the sovereignty <coughs> type of things. Okay, as uh, the most recently the focus is, okay, this, okay, you probably okay, hear the story of the South China Sea. China is right now, okay, uh, the, 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 the building, okay, South China Sea, okay, as uh, this is an area of the territorial dispute. Okay, uh, the different, okay, there are many small, okay, s okay, small islands scattered across the, in this sea. And each of these different, okay, small islands claimed by the different neighboring countries. But uh, China is now making the wholesome claim. All of these sea as uh, their sea, okay, their internal sea. Okay, so they are not only making the, okay, legal claim, they are actually taking action, meaning that creating the military facility over there. Okay, start to dominate this sea by naval forces, okay, by military forces. And the, some of the, okay, some of the, okay, as uh, American experts, okay, tend to believe that the ultimate, okay, final purpose of the, okay, Chinese military plan now is create sort of the, okay, uh, the, the system, okay, oh, I'm sorry. Sort of the system they would like to create here. Okay, can you see here? Okay, this map. Okay, this so-called fast light on the chain. Okay, right? Okay, according to the interpretation of the some of the American expert, China expert. Okay, the purpose of the Chinese military plan at this moment is making this sea, okay, turning into the China's internal sea. Meaning that, you know, okay, they want to kick out from this area, American naval forces. Okay, so therefore the, they would like to dominate. Okay, uh, the, this, okay, okay, western half of the chi okay, uh, the Pacific Ocean. And uh, so this is, a, okay, uh, the, so what, okay, causing the concern for the, um, okay, American leader also, okay, American military plan, American leader, and also Japanese leader. Okay, but uh, this kind, okay, this, okay, uh, the kind of risk assessment based on the assumption that, okay, China is not willing to respect international order the United States is promoting. But uh, as a political scientist, I have to make one more important point. Okay, that point is a okay, point related to the, okay, uh, the political scientist jargon called Thucydides trap. Okay, Thucydides trap is telling us, he's based on the history, regardless of the intention of the country involved, whether China is willing to cooperate with us or not. Okay, uh, the, 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 the 
the moment of the okay, okay, rapidly changing power balance among the major countries is a recipe for the big war among the global politics, uh, in the global power. Okay, okay, I'm going to talk about, okay, this is a so-called Thucydides trap or the, okay, concept we call power okay, transition political scientist. Okay, Thucydides is a great, okay, Greek historian. Okay, I never read this book by myself, okay, always I did just excerpt, okay, of the assigned books, okay, this is a big book. And, uh, okay, Thucydides wrote about the Peloponnesian War. I've never been to Greece, but I, I'm talking about <laughs> this, okay? And uh, always there's uh, one important sentence political scientists repeatedly referring to. Okay, it was the lies of Athens and the fear that, okay, that this instilled in Sparta that made war in inevitable. Okay, this is a moment, okay? Idea is very simple, okay? Peloponne okay, this book, Peloponnesian War is basically the war between the Athens and Sparta, okay? And, uh, okay, the so Sparta was a traditional power. Now Athens is rising. This kind of moment, two power exist, and the power balance is changing between two, these two powers, okay? This is a moment political scientists we call power transition. And historically speaking, okay, there's a general consensus that this is the most dangerous moment, okay? The riskiest moment, okay? High, okay, highest incident moment for the, okay, likelihood of the war among the countries, okay? Because of the associated, okay, uncertainty, all of this logic exists. But anyway, most famous example, recent example of the moment of the power transition is Europe, okay? The rise of the, okay, British versus Germany, okay? Back in the 19th century, Okay, through the 19th century, Britain was a top, okay, hegemonic, okay, hegemon, top, top country in Europe and global politics. Suddenly, towards the end of the 19th century, Germans started to rise, almost like today's ch China. Okay, and the eventually, these two countries, for various reasons, which goes beyond the discussion of the today's lecture, but uh, eventually clash. Okay, this is a typical example of power transition. It's, okay, political scientists learning from the past example tend to argue that whenever you have power transitions, two powerful countries, okay, balance of power, these countries rapidly shifting. This is a dangerous moment for the global politics because neither side unsure about their position and the difficulty predicting others' reaction and counter reaction. So therefore, the, okay, leaders, leaders of the global politics surrounded, dominated, Okay, overwhelmed by the uncertainty, unpredictability. So therefore, the leading to the okay, the start of the war. Okay, this is a okay basic message of the Thucydides trap. And most recently, this okay term is becoming very popular because okay, one of the famous professor from Harvard University named Graham Harrison wrote a book on this topic. And you may read okay his article to Thucydides trap. But anyway, okay, my point is. Okay, the problem of the China is not really talking about, just on not talking about the China's intention, okay, where the Chinese are democratic countries are willing to okay, work with us. This is one important aspect of the problem. But the more than that, more fundamentally, whenever there's a rapid change of the power balance among the countries, there's a good risk of the war. This is a lesson, okay, political scientist, as a political scientist, I need to emphasize from today's, okay, okay, my learning from the political science and also in this relation. And finally, okay, as a, the, I have, okay, one more issue, okay, issue of the Okinawa. This is, okay, completely different from the fact I just discussed. Okay, there's one important sticking point remaining U.S.-Japan Security Alliance. The, the issue related to the small island, okay, of the Japanese island named Okinawa. Okinawa is, a, okay, as, a, as you can see, okay, Okinawa is okay, far away from okay, Japanese main island. Okay, it's a southern island. But because of the, its unique location, actually, okay, as half of the American okay, US okay, military bases and also US personnel okay, stationed on this small island. And okay, Okinawanians, Okinawans, okay, Okinawa people don't like this reality. Okay, so therefore the, there's a growing rise, okay, rise of the anti-US based movement, which is causing a tension between the Washington DC and Tokyo right now. 
and the, okay, so, so, so particularly the treatment of the, this, okay, uh, the US Futema, okay, this is okay, Marine Corps Air Station, okay, and the relocation plan is now being implemented, but there is a strong local anti, okay, uh, the base movement, okay, rising, and uh, this is causing, okay, tension. Okay, uh, the, the, I'm not, okay, I don't have time to go into the detail of the, these questions. Okay, probably better to take, okay, questions. Okay, uh, the, so, okay, I would like to finish up my lecture here. Okay, so that I would like to emphasize three points from this lecture. Okay, the United States, okay, first of all, US-Japan Security Alliance. This was created as a system to conduct Cold War confrontation. <coughs> yes, so in that sense, its traditional mission was over, mission completed, but, Today, okay, the alliance's nature completely changed, redefined. So therefore, okay, alliance is not a simple hangover from the Cold War legacy, as some policy, U.S. policymaker wants to argue. And also, okay, as alliance is a, okay, this alliance is a win-win arrangement in the sense, first, okay, uh, the, this is a okay, good way to saving cost. For both financially, both countries benefiting from this arrangement. And also, this is a good system to, okay, uh, the, the, the both, okay, two countries, na okay, national armies, okay, complementing against, okay, complementing each other, okay? And, uh, and the final point, okay, this is also important. Today, okay, this alliance normal concerning the bilateral relationship between Japan and the United States. Okay, this is about more broadly, the peace in Asia. Okay, as I said, this okay, alliance system now starts as a, okay, functioned as a foundation of the US debt regional security system. Okay, so therefore giving this, okay, alliance is more, okay, its implication is much larger than two, okay, bilateral relationship between United States and Japan. Okay, I would like to finish up my lecture here. Okay, my lecture here. So, okay, should I open up, okay, question, okay, uh, just open to the floor if you have any questions. Yes. Uh, the biggest, con I don't know if it's true or not, but mm. is the USA the biggest consumer of Chinese products, or are they selling some somewhere else? Oh, China, okay, consumer, of course it's the largest consumer of the Chinese goods is China. Right, but yeah. outside of China though. Okay, China, okay, largest export, okay, large export company. Export. Then. Yes. So my question then, if mm. that's the case, mm. why are you making your best customer mad? I mean, I don't understand this. I don't understand why China is being aggressive as it is. Okay, yes, okay, you are making the very important point. Okay, this is a, okay, there is no consensus among the political scientists, okay? Uh, there is one people, okay? Uh, the economic incentive to deter the war among the countries. If you have the economic gains, why we need to fight against each right. other? This is sort of the free trade leading to the global yeah. peace. Okay, but uh, if you go back to the history, Okay, say for example, the case of Germany and Britain, okay, back in the World War I. They are both of them the big economic partner, but they still started the war against each other. Okay, uh, so, 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 okay, uh, the, yeah, I understand your logic. So my, my own opinion is, okay, uh, the, the, the economic relationship can become the sum, okay, uh, the, okay, some, okay, deterrence, okay, some have some de deterrence effect, meaning that to, to some extent, Okay, try to discourage countries to en act, engage war with those countries. But uh, this doesn't explain everything. Sometimes, okay, country can behave because of the just simply misunderstanding or the silly decision making. Okay, we are not 100% okay, well, rational. So therefore, the, even that, okay, taking, okay, respecting your uh, logic, still I don't deny 100% the, the possibility. Of the, yes. Okay. Well, I'm just curious as yes. to why yes. do the, that, yes. you know, so yes. I just can't understand. And also, the, I have to tell you, China is never thinking, okay, short term. They are thinking long term, 20 years, 30 years. Okay, they believe that eventually they establish a control over the GC 22 decades after, three decades after, they should be fine. They are, okay, thinking really long term perspective. What if the U.S. decides to put uh, sanctions on China, you know, put big tariff on all the... But the United States also will hurt. We will lose the important. Mm. Okay, we, we okay. We would. We, yes, <laughs> we have to pay, okay. Right. So first, first of all, the Walmart will go bankrupt. Okay, they, they are, okay, sure, we just like, have nothing okay, to sell. Mm. Yes. <laughs> yes, okay. Yeah. Uh, you've mentioned that the uh, first solution to the 
North Korean mm. uh, nuclear crisis is dipl diplomacy. Oh, no, no, I, I have, we have only three options. Yeah. Yes. But you've mentioned that diplomacy is uh, not. Uh, yes, that's so embarrassing. Uh, do you see that there are any signs that Kim Jong-un is ready to negotiate? I don't think so at this moment. Okay, most recent, okay, okay, this past week, okay, this week, okay, uh, the, the Kim Yo-jong, the sister of the Kim Jong visiting the North Korea. Uh, from my perspective, this is mostly the peer, okay, public relations performance, nothing more than that. And, okay, okay, important point, okay, as a, okay, when we discuss about the North Korea's issue, we tend to look at, okay, this issue only from nuclear crisis, nuclear problem. But the South Korean people has a different perspective. For them, this is also the issue of the national unification, okay? And uh, okay, there are a bunch of the people exist among the South Korean people, particularly from that segment. Okay, current Kim, okay, Kim, uh, uh, Moon Jae in, current president is elected. Okay, those people, okay, tend to believe that, okay, North Korea and South Korea, both people are victimized by the great power like United States. Okay, so therefore, the whenever they would like to make peace, friendship, okay, United States, China try to intervene and make noise. Kind of the sentiment exists. Okay, so understanding that psyche of the Korean people, con okay, intentionally, okay, okay, I believe that Kim Jong Un tried to drive the wedge between the okay, United States, on the one hand, versus Korean people, South Korean people here, so that have better negotiation position vis-a-vis -vis United States. That is what they are aiming at. That, that is my interpretation. Yes, Jay. Mm. but also causing problems between Tokyo and Tokyo. Yes, exactly. And the second is, um, I've read accounts that Truman, uh, Truman's idea for dropping the bombs was to save lives from the inevitable invasion that would have to happen. But I've also read accounts that suggest what he was really trying to do was to send a message to the Russians <coughs> that actually had the bombs. Okay, uh, the first question, okay, I skipped that question because we are running out of time. Okay, but the big question is, okay, Okinawa people has a very special position in the inside Japanese society. Okay, uh, the, they are the sort of the minority people in the Japanese, okay, context. And how many as they tend to be deceived, the, okay, sort of the, okay, uh, the, 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 okay, second class status inside Japanese people, uh, society, and actually the, Okay, uh, the Japanese government, okay, leader willing, okay, back in the 1952, Japanese leader willing to debt Okinawa, o Okinawa, unlike, okay, main island of Japan, continue to put under the American control under two more decades, until 1972. So the, Amer okay, from, you can f okay, see from this example, Japanese leader, Tokyo is always willing to sacrifice Okinawa people to, in order to advance their own interests. And this is another reason why the, okay, okay, as the Okinawa people are so fed up with, okay, as the, 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 they are forcing, okay, to host so many U.S. facility, okay, despite the fact that the number of the U.S. facility on the main island is declining. Okay, yes, I understand. Okay, did I answer your question, first part? Second part is, okay, okay, you never know, okay, there are many different accounts. Okay, I, my gut, okay, my, uh, what I can tell you is there are, okay, not one single factor leading to the one particular decision. There are many different undercurrent, okay, as a summing up leading to the, okay, that decision of the President Toruma to use nuclear weapons. But, uh, okay, definitely one of such factors, of course, to save the, okay, as a potential, okay, possible, okay, as a casualty, United States suffer once we, okay, start to, Okay, such so okay, actual operation of the landing, okay, operation on the Japanese main island. This is what important reason. But also there is another Soviet factor is definitely true. Okay, uh, the, yes. I, but uh, okay, and also that, okay, most recently I came to know that also there is also the, okay, important, okay, and those days, this is a sort of the bureaucratic politics inside, okay, armed forces. Okay, uh, the, those days still, Okay, uh, the, 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 the U.S. Air Force was not a okay, separate brain, branch of the armed forces. They would like making efforts to become the separate branches. But uh, they need to have some record to show, okay, they are the different, okay, they can okay, achieve their own achievement. So therefore, the, 
okay, consciously the leader of the, okay, uh, the, 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 uh, okay, those days, okay, the Air Force is part of the Army. And but the top of the, this Air Force okay, team is actually consciously try to conduct okay, okay, aerial bombing campaign in order to show that okay, they themselves without committing the ground troops can achieve okay, major achievement. Type of, so they also there's a, okay, I'm talking about the bureaucratic politics exists inside okay, this military plan. Okay, this is another factor. <coughs> so did I answer a quick question? <laughs> yes. Yes, Elijah. Um, with China's current president mm -hmm. and their statement they made recently about putting China first, mm -hmm. and like with their recent motives in the South China Sea, how do you think this is going to affect the U.S. and Japanese uh, se uh, national security, mm. uh, future national security, and <coughs> it's mm. two? Would you think they would uh, be of a more I guess like a, a treaty between like more nations to counter this, like just the idea behind it, because I know that mm. that's their more recent policy after Jinping was reelected for another term. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. Uh, would you re okay, uh, the repeat? Okay, yeah, elaborate the second question. And, um, do you think that mm. a new organization, like similar to NATO, oh, okay, okay. to counter this the new? Mm, 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 okay. And first of all, okay, the first okay, first question. Okay, uh, the, the, the unlike okay, first of all, unlike the North Korea situation, I don't believe that military okay clash between United States and China is likely in your future. I don't expect that. Okay, but uh, China China is uh, as I just okay mentioned, thinking always long term, okay, minimum of five years, ten years. So therefore the Okay, what the United States should do is not to show the weakness. Okay, uh, the okay once you show the weakness, okay, China slowly, quietly start to work on that. Okay, weakness, gradually pushing back. Okay, roll back or roll you back. So that that is a Chinese style. So therefore, okay, I don't believe that. Okay, China is seriously. Okay, at this moment the war started. China is never. Okay, cannot win. Okay, we can easily defeat China. But uh, they are thinking five years time, 10 years time, gradually expanding, okay? Checking, testing the America's willingness, determination always, so gradually undermining America's posture in Asia, Pacific. That is part, okay, their strategy. That is my interpretation. And the second point is, okay, given this reality, and China is continuing to grow, and they have the financial power to sustain this kind of pressure, assumption, economic growth continues. If this is the case, okay, uh, so we have to join the hand. Okay, eventually, because the United States, Japanese, we are the major, okay, old economy, unlikely to recover, the, okay, good financial, st okay, st status pretty soon. So therefore, the, we need to gather, okay, join our resources together. So that, so that idea, I also okay, tend to propose the idea of the regional security system of the, okay, the NATO thought, okay, not only just okay, relying on the one particular country, okay. Uh, the resources, but uh, okay, mobilizing okay, like like-minded country through the region. Yes. Okay. Any other questions? Right. Okay. I would like to. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay.